Hello and welcome to Nobody Wake the Bugbear. We are an Australian actual play podcast creating premium audio and video content for the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG published by Tuesday Night Games. You can find our social accounts at NWTB Podcast and at NWT Bugbear for our Twitter. If you enjoy what you hear and want to hear more, you can also support us over on patreon.com slash NWTB Podcast. My name is Andrew, and I will be your warden for this evening, and joining me are three of my friends and players. To my left is Doug. Hi. Hello, Doug. How are you? I'm wonderful. Happy to be here. Good. That was Doug. Ready to play some Final Fantasy. Yes. More on that soon. And slightly further away from Doug is Josh. Yeah, I am slightly further away. Not that you'd hear it, but hi, I'm Josh. And lastly, to my right is John. Yes, I'm John. I'm a little bit sick today, or for those of you who are Australian, crook. For those who, those barbarians, the non-Australian, that live somewhere in little huts out in the middle of the Eastern Europe, in radio stations where you get the podcast, crook means sick. John's ill. <laughs> <laughs> You're ill, John. You're unwell. A little You're bit. You're feeling poorly. I did a test this morning uh, because I got paranoid, because after I did one negative test, I was feeling the same thing in my limbs that I got last time. I got the fizzy virus and uh so i did it again but i still didn't get positive results well the only positive result is you showing up john and ready to play this fantastic game we have for you this evening only because i'm scared of you yes this is a very special episode of nobody wake the bugbear for we are potentially the first podcast to play cloud empress yes yeah i love octopass what what it's another jrpg JRPG. (laughs) oh yes (laughs) But hang on, wait a second, Andrew. What about Mothership? Wait a second, Andrew. I thought we were playing Mothership. That's why you called yourself the Warden. Wait a minute. Isn't your name Andrew that has the same letters in it as Warden? That is true. But How we... can I trust you now? <laughs> Nobody told me we were playing Fire Emblem. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> well, we are playing Cloud Empress. Cloud Empress is an ecological science fantasy setting for the Mothership sci-fi horror RPG. Cloud Empress in the Land of 10,000 Cicadas will be produced as a full-colour, perfect-bound book and PDF. It is currently in development and will be crowdfunded in early January 2023. Yes, we are right now part of the secret conspiracy that's uh, putting forward this this adaptation to the Mothership RPG. We've been given the privilege of early access. Have we not? Yes. No. It's been available on the publisher's site for a while, John. We are just the first actual play podcast to dive in. It is being developed by Worlds by Watt. Watt is a queer tabletop role-playing game creator writing at the intersection of science fiction, gender, humour, body horror and climate justice. Their game Cloud Empress is inspired by Norsica in the Valley of the Wind, the Books of the Earth Sea and Full Metal Alchemist. You all fans of those animations, gentlemen? I, I did really enjoy Full Metal Alchemist. Did you enjoy the original or did you enjoy Brotherhood that came out years later? Well, Brotherhood, because I read the mangas first because I'm a weeb. I was a weeb. Yes. I'm a reformed weeb. But if you were uh, a weeb, why did you not have the original show watched first? Because I read the books first. True. But the show was out. I did. I watched the show. <laughs> Good. But Brotherhood was... Better? Better. Yeah. Hot take. Hot take, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've uh, not watched Brotherhood. I'd rather just not find out. Brotherhood, and, and, and know that I enjoyed the first. I enjoyed both in different ways, but yeah, I suggest you check it out. Anyway, this isn't about Full Metal Alchemist. This is about Cloud Empress. In Cloud Empress, in the land of ten thousand cicadas, players explore a land governed by the patterns of giant psychic cicadas known as the Amargo. When glory-hungry soldiers from royal lands above the clouds threaten the balance, the wheat fields will burn without the player's help. This evening we will be playing The Last Voyage of the Bean Barge, the first adventure for the Cloud Empress setting. Before we begin our journey, we need to create some characters. So please keep in mind that this is a playtest version of the system, so it is subject to change. And just like Mothership, we start with step one, which is to roll our stats. Here we go. Here we go. Everyone has their character sheets in front of you, the beautiful Cloud Empress character sheet. Pretty dope. And you may begin rolling. 
You each have four stats, strength, speed, mind and heart, representing how well you act under extreme pressure. Roll three ten-sided dice, add them together, and then add 20, and record the results for each stat. And as we do in Mothership, you may roll your four results and then arrange them how you will to your class, which is a later step. Jeepers. Creepers. Where'd you get those peepers? The internet. They are all concentrating on their dice trays. Yeah. Okay, I've got my first set of numbers. Good. We'll go to Josh. Are you ready? Nearly. You're not skipping to step two, are you, Doug? No. Good. I'm good. Doug's a bit slow with the old math rocks. <laughs> Aren't you, Doug? Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Don't worry, Doug. With the miracle of editing, your dice rolling will be the fastest in the West. Yeah. Good luck having a higher speed than me, though. Yeah. Doug's obviously got the lowest speed of the group. We will move on to step two, which is to roll your saves. You may begin. Your three saves are reality, fear, and body, representing how resistant and reactive you are to different kinds of trauma and danger. You may roll two ten-sided dice, add them together, and then add 20, and record your results for each save. Going back to step one, your stats have changed slightly from Mothership. So instead of intellect, you have mind, which is your memory, logic, and learning spells under pressure. You have heart instead of combat now, which is your empathy, observation, and how you cast spells under pressure. You have strength, which is your force, toughness, and melee combat under pressure. And finally, you have speed, which is your agility, dexterity, and ranged combat under pressure. Your saves are reality. This is replacing sanity, and that is your ability to resist the false becoming true under pressure. Your fear, your ability to face scary stuff, and your body, your ability to resist physical trauma, poisoning, and radiation under pressure. How are you all going? Pretty good. Are you all ready? Mm, I've made my entrance. Good. Josh, are you ready for the next step? I mean, yeah. All right, let's go. Step three is to roll your age. John, what is the age of your character? I rolled grown. My character is about 37 years old, I've decided. It's so on the later half of grown. Well, it's, no, not really. It's the middle half of grown. It's like seasoned yeah. for his I world. would describe myself, who's similar to age, being seasoned. Yes. There are four age ranges. One John has mentioned. The first one is green. The second is grown, the third is old, and the last is body hopper. We won't get into body hoppers just yet, but we will describe the rest. You may roll a 10-sided die to determine your age and adjust your stats accordingly, because the ages do adjust your stats. Determines how hot you are when you're drawn in an anime style. Yes. <laughs> Keep in mind that old PCs cannot be magicians, and you, if you are a body hopper, you can refer to the body hopper passage in the reference document. But I don't think any of us are body hoppers. Josh, what is your character's age? 28. 28. So you are grown also. I am also grown. And and I'm on the younger side. Younger grown. side of grown. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, what age are you? Uh, we'll go with a nice solid 70. <laughs> good. It's a solid 70. Yeah. Excellent. So we know you're not a magician, so that's good. Let's go on to step four which you have already pre-chosen, so we've, we'll just tell the audience about it now. There are four classes in Cloud Empress. You've got the Lordling. It is no simple thing to wield power and privilege. Lordlings are well-trained, but create fear in those around them. It's a reskin of the android class from Mothership. Yes, correct, John. The next is the Cell Sword. A warrior without purpose is a wild dog. Cell Swords can handle themselves in a fight, but hold wavering allegiances. It's a reskin of the Marine from Mothership RPG. Thank you, John. The next class is the Magician. There are no old magicians. Magicians cast dangerous spells at the cost of their body. Josh? This is true. All of this. Good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, not the, it's not really a reskin of the scientist from uh, I... uh, Mothership RPG because scientists can't cast spells. 
but it's kind of the equivalent. And they're normally quite old. Well, uh, I was just um, like a little bit of gap in thought because I realized that I didn't add 20. I only added 10 to one of my rolls. So I was like, why is that really low? And I was like, oh, okay, I only added 10. That's why. I did not, I did not roll a two on one of my stats. Of course. The last class is the courier. The road makes fools of us all. Couriers are scrappy travellers capable of succeeding at a variety of tasks. John, what is this class mimicking in Mothership? Oh, I don't know. The kind of salt of the earth Sounds kind like of a guys. Teamster for me. Sounds like a teamster to me, yeah. Sounds like an Imago shit excuse I'm for a, a character if you ask me. I'm Gord. I'm named after those little pumpkins you put water in. <laughs> Once you, have, once you have selected your class, adjust your saves accordingly. Let's go around the table and discover everyone's class. John? I am a sellsword. I, uh, I fight and uh, sell myself out. I fight and sell my sword, if you will. Yes, metaphorically. And what does a sellsword get in regards to their stat changes? Can you let us know? Sellswords get a plus 30 to body save. And uh, that's all that matters at the moment. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. And they get blades or firearm sk skills. When we get to the skills. Well, this is part of the skills. It they is... get blade or firearm, and they also get two bonus skills and street smarts. Excellent. Yes, you come with skills, so mark any skills of your class is trained in on your character sheet, and then select any number of additional skills equal to your number of bonus skills that you receive. Moving on to Doug, what is your class? I'll be playing an old lordling. Old lordling? What does a lordling get? Uh, I get a plus four in fear save and a minus ten in reality. I don't know Because you're losing your mind at me. that age. Uh, I get dueling, etiquette, and three other skills. Excellent. That wasn't the, I wasn't doing my voice yet, by the way. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And finally, we have Josh. What is your class? This is entirely, this isn't what I've chosen or prepared, by the way, but it's just that I don't know why or where from when John was talking about his character, I suddenly had the urge to voice mine in the voice of John Malkovich. <laughs> I am a magician. <laughs> and I believe you'll be keeping that. No. I am, I am a magician. And what a magician I know spells. I know the ways of spells. Hold on, John. You've had your you've had you've had your limelight. I cast spells from chalk made from the bones of people who are died and have been eaten by the imago. I am not a person who has a lot of empathy. I am <laughs> And what is <laughs> what is <I>, magician? <laughs> <laughs> I being a magician use my body to spell cast as well and so i am not expected to live very long that's my best john malkovich by the way i i you're going to make the audience upset if you don't carry that on you know <laughs> yeah, it's but what does the magician get mechanically 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 the magician gets plus 22 reality saves so i know what's what mysticism as a proficiency spell casting as a proficiency because duh and three bonus skills it's a lot of skills. Of course. Don't you mean skills, not proficiency, you D&D &D nerd? Well, I think There's no the, room for proficiencies here. Well, you know, proficiencies are fairly, you know... Broad common, term. Broad yes. term, yeah. It's not like it was invented by Wizards of the Coast. Of course not. Moving on. Let's well, not yeah, mention their name that, again. No, I want to say... Yeah, I want to say that. It's not like it was invented by they who shall not be named. Okay. Let us continue. You have all got your classes... Step five is stress. There is no minimum stress, so you can all relax. Bleh. Your maximum stress, however, is 10. Oh. So now you cannot relax because you'll get to 10 faster. The D20, I guess. Yep. Bye-bye, D20. So what, what happens when you get to 10? Anything? Or it's just, you just, that's capped? Same as if you get to 20. It's the same as if you just get to 20. John is holding up a picture of John Malkovich... <laughs> Which, when John, you draw a sketch of Josh's character, he's just going to draw gonna a be fucking John, John Malkovich. Malkovich. <laughs> it's John it's Malkovich. not even going to match the description when I give it. Yeah. He's just going to be like, too bad. One of these pictures is going to be pure 
Johnny Malky. Okay, we're eating up the time slot. Let's go to step six, which is to note your trauma response. Trauma response is optional in Cloud Empress. We have decided to use it for this adventure, so please take note of your class's trauma response for future reference. John, what is the Cell Sword's trauma response? When a Cell Sword panics, every nearby friendly player must make a fear save. Mimicking the Marine. Mimicking the Marine, yeah. Josh, magician. When a magician fails a reality save, everyone nearby gains a stress. That's pretty nasty. And Doug? Uh, Lordling? Uh, fear saves made by friendly players near a Lordling are a disadvantage. Which I'm going to find hard to roleplay because <laughs> you just sound so harmless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine like some... I hate to go back to a... The same thing over and over again, but John Malkovich would be a really great... <laughs> Make a good lordling. Yeah. Make a great lordling. <laughs> Solid or, lordling. Or really just any, like, crantankerous old man that's like, if you get go, over here, you little shit! If you go with what you wrote on the paper and then showed to me under the podcast, that I could see being unnerving. <laughs> Christopher Walken. Yeah, he wrote Christopher Walken on a piece of paper. Is that the voice you're trying to do? <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> to imagine. If Christopher Walken was an old... Noble, I would definitely be terrified. I came down. What you're doing there is you're predicting oh, what, what you're predicting what Dune Part Two is going to be like when he he's been cast as the Emperor. Oh, he actually? Yes, Christopher Walken <laughs> yes. is the Emperor. This young upstart boy, Marcus. and I said this ball to the Mecca. You, right, you, we're not turning into our impressions. You so bring me down, <laughs> and you ask to marry my daughter. <laughs> the chalk. The chalk gives us power. Oh God, I'm sorry. It gives us power. <laughs> I made a terrible mistake. Let's let's continue. The Imago. Let's let's they end this. Bones. Let's go. Oh God. Step seven is to roll your loadout and what you are traveling with. Roll a ten-sided die for your loadout, which we have already done in advance, based on your class. And write your weapon, if you have one, your clothing or armor, your spells and items on your character sheet, and then roll a 1d100 to determine what you are traveling with. Now I roll a 10. Have you just rolled a 10? Yeah. This is your d100? No, for the, um, because I jokingly oh, rolled well, for yeah. the, yeah. Forget about that. Now, everyone, we have rolled for their loadout. Let's find out the loadout when we describe our characters in game, shall we? Mm. So let's roll for their trinket, if you will, what they're traveling with. John, do you want to go first? Or Doug's holding his dice. Die. Roll a D100 for me. 98. 98. Hot roll. Yes. Would you like to know what a 98 is? Uh, no. No, thank you. I wouldn't. Okay. We'll keep it secret. Imagine <laughs> you tell me. Audience. That. Audience. Doug isn't listening. Doug's character will have one finely crafted hide bandolier, <laughs> which is empty. That's nice. <laughs> that works very well from what you told me. <laughs> okay. He's a pacifist. Yeah, but it's empty. He's out of grenades. He's done all these grenades in his life. Let's roll, John. I will roll mine next. Your cell sword. What are they traveling with? Yeah, don't roll your dice. Roll, John. (laughs) Forty-six. 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 Forty. Forty. Oh, Mm -hmm. this will be interesting. Yes. How you role play this, Mm -hmm. which you certainly will. Mm -hmm. Eight tattoos that mark your time in prison. Eight tattoos. <laughs> eight tattoos. Jeepers. Eight. All right. It could just be the numbers one to eight to see how many years you've been in prison. No, it's not that. It's not that. We'll find out what it is soon. Lastly, we have Josh. Roll a D100. Oh, that's a, that's a 10. A 10. You have one eyeless porcelain doll. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me what you're going to call the doll now. So the John Valkovich should be like, what do you think? What do you think, Nimbus? <laughs> and in brackets, it's got haunted. Yeah. Don't try to talk to Nimbus. He is my toy. We just can't keep bringing back to the haunt, can we? No, we can't escape <laughs> the haunt. Back to the I'm being doll. an old man again. We, he is we, the haunt. We are haunted by the haunt, <laughs> yes. quite literally, in the show. We're going to get stun locked to death again. There's no stun in this game, but there is fun. Day, As we go on to the lock. final step, fun lock. The final step, step eight, is to roll, choose, or invent a name for yourself. Give your character some pronouns, a goofy portrait, which John will be drawing, and put down any other biographical notes in their notes box, and we'll find out their name in game. No, oh, I got short wind. If it's all the same to you. Yes, let's do it. All right, let's do it. And that's it. Is everyone ready? John, are you ready? I'm ready. Josh? I'm ready. Again? I'm ready. Not SpongeBob? 
because I cut every one of those out in the in the show. But this is my voice. <laughs> okay, now we've got SpongeBob as your <laughs> voice. Okay, I'm ready. Good. I'll leave that all in. Let us begin. Cloud Empress, the last voyage of the Bean Barge, part one. Welcome to the hereafter. The world burned itself into a mirror to swallow the torturers whole. Seeing what they had become, they were filled with disgust. But the disgust only fueled their hunger. In sweating fists, they broke their fingernails down to the bloody bone, raking, taking, and running to a fate hidden behind milky skies. The city of Sparrow's Nest floats above the clouds, the wide open. Not so much a city, but a collection of ramshackle buildings and structures cobbled together, much like the nest of a great bird, kept aloft by the magic of the chalk engines. Home to over 100 people, it is the largest city to grace the skies within hundreds of miles. The skies around the city bustle with the comings and goings of other sky ships thopters and barges. One such barge is docked and awaiting departure, the last remaining passengers making their way onto the deck. The Bean Barge, a dusty old relic from a bygone age, gone past its prime a dozen times over. Whatever its original purpose, the Bean Barge now ferries travellers in gallons of water from the city to the breadbasket below. Shaped like a long, open bean pod, two large water tanks take up the middle of the upper deck. To the front and the rear are tall spires, each attached with a dragonfly-like sail, which act as rudders. Keeping the barge aloft are two chalk engines underneath the front and the rear. No ship carries enough fuel for unplanned ascents anymore. Once launched, there is no going back. The cargo has been loaded, and one of the last three passengers are boarding. John, stepping onto the bean barge, is a man. What do they look like, and who is this person? In a billowing, thick, rough-hewn cloak, which is dyed a sort of mottled blue, the same colour as the sky, which covers his entire body like a poncho, but you can see the vague shape of some kind of armour beneath and a strange helmet, which is obviously fashioned of imago shell, which has got a big backward-sweeping cone on the front, like a kind of dolphin's fin, and a brim over his eyes. His skin is leathery, burned brown, and he's got a wispy, blonde goatee beard scraggling to his chin, with a quite severe scar down his lip, where it's healed, sort of gashed open, and you can see a crooked set of teeth in the front. But he's got quite piercing blue eyes that match his cloak, and he walks quite light-footed, despite the fact that you can see armor kind of 
sliding to and fro beneath the bundled cloak. This is Boon of Tektite, the very last of a foolish settlement that once dreamed of reconquering the world. He is the very last of their great warriors, and now he walks alone. Walking after Boon of Tektite is Josh's character. You'll see if you're behind this character, not a lot, but a seeming cloud of dust in your face. As this person walks, it seems like the only explanation for the common folk would to believe that this is a magician because chalk is coming off of their body like crazy. Like this person dabbles and practices and experiments with it and As he walks forward, you see that he's got this kind of linen calico type cloak and it hangs off of him quite broadly. And if you're looking at him from the front, you'll see a very sallow face, quite sickly, sort of like you would think that if this person was actually spending in time like where the sun is actually touching their skin, then perhaps they might be a darker uh, person, you know, like more tan or or olive skin. But all you see is that same residue all over his face. It doesn't look like he cleans it off at any point. Long black hair, fairly unkept, and you'll see under the cloak is a full set of military armour. It's got kind of little scratches and, and, and marks on it. It's quite unseemly. It doesn't look like it's been well kept. Not like you would expect from a military person themselves. So perhaps, you know, this could be theirs from a life before magic, or perhaps this wasn't theirs to begin with. It could have been scavenged off of a a dead soldier. All things to learn about this character in the future. And their name was? Their name is Cloud, also known as the Lonely Cloud Magician. The lonely cloud floats onto the deck of the bean barge. Behind him is the last passenger to grace the deck. Grace wouldn't be the word I would use, more like stumble. You see a very old gentleman in like tattered rags. It looks like he just walked out of a prison cell or a slave camp or something. He's just wearing rags. He has a a very ornate stick though like this walking stick that he's using to keep himself upright a nice deep well looked after wood with a weird looking well crafted well loved leather bandolier wrapping down the shaft of it with a a few little what looks to be like darts or needles sitting in the the little slots on the bandolier and he uh sort of stumbling and looking around a little little confused little disorientated and your name Doug Lord Lupus Clay Lord Lupus Clay the last passenger to board the bean barge you are all greeted by the first mate some kid green as fresh spinach they have dark neck length hair and are dressed in a white shirt and trousers they greet you with a smile ahoy travelers my name is onion I'm the first mate. Welcome to the bean barge. And this person, they begin reaching for your bags immediately without asking. I don't have any bags. I just nod. Don't say anything back. Oh, thank you. I just said, get your bags. Uh, sh- sure. Here. Um, the bag's empty as well. Oh. <laughs> He's carrying one. It's just got nothing in it. Do any of you have weapons on your person? Yes, I have a recurve bow and a quiver with six arrows in it. This person, Onion, reaches for it to go take it off you. It's okay, I'm just taking your weapon. It has to be secured in the weapons locker downstairs. Downstairs? Are we going to get them back? Of course. What kind of ship do you think this is? All right. As long as you can promise we won't need them. Um, You'll see a flare rifle hanging over his shoulder. It's not really a... A, a weapon, it's just an oversized flare gun. As they reach for the weapon of the person in front of me, I'll follow suit and 
take it and I'll kind of just like throw it without even seeing if they're looking or not. They catch it eagerly in their hands. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is a fine flare gun. I've got one myself. Uh huh. We use them all the time. Okay. Is that so, little one? What do you use them on? Well, they're good at scaring off the Amargo. We should have invested in those back home. Also, we needed to light the flares to signal other ships. We get many in this part of the world? Oh, yes, the skies are full of them, can't you see? What about pirates? There are pirates, to be sure, but we don't expect to be seeing any today. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're never expecting to see pirates. Of course, e everything's going to be fine. Over there is Captain Stello. Please go and pay courtesy to him before we embark, which will be shortly. Uh, I'll get your weapons. Cloud walks over and just kind of walks up to him. Not necessarily to the front of him, just to whatever side's facing. Looks at him because he's hunched over. He's looking up. A lot of people, he's looking up because of how much he hunches, but he's looking up and he says, Do you have a bathroom? In front of you, you see an equally hunched man. Looks to be in his late 50s, perhaps. And he's got these cables that are coming out of a long robe and they're snaking down the ship and they lead into the captain's quarters. And he's got a walking stick and he's sitting across the deck watching everyone come on board, surveying. Looks at the cables and he's like, are you sick? And he says, oh, greetings, traveler. You have boarded my vessel. Have you come to pay respects? It's fine. I'll find the bathroom myself. The and bathroom, he just walks away. Of course. I, <laughs> I will stride up to the captain, stand straight with my hands at my sides, and do a very stiff military salute. And I'll say, Captain, thank you for admitting us. Is this a safe vessel? Oh, of course, it is quite safe. I haven't had any problems in many years. Um, the captain feels a, a slight tug at the cable as Cloud inspects it wistlessly. He doesn't even seem to notice. What are you doing? Oh, me? Is it... Yes, you. It's interesting. Dusty. I wonder if he's sick. I feel fine. I'm just... I get weary. I cannot walk on the deck for too long. But I always... Greet the passengers as they come. You are the last. Do these cables wince you back to your room? He looks a bit dismissive of your question. What are your names? I am Captain Stello. I am Boone of Tectite. The clear skies to you, Boone. And you? The bathroom onion can sort out, can clear give you skies. a tour. My name is Cloud. Oh, hello, Cloud. A fine name. Yes, Onion can sort you out to the bathroom. It's just below the deck. Okay. I'll sort of hobble over and give him a sort of very formal sort of greeting. At the sight of a, a lordling, Captain Stello comes up, grabs your hand and bows to you. Welcome, lordling. It is fine to grace my vessel with your presence. What? Oh, I said it's fine to grace... <sighs> The vessel with your presence. Oh, say, to thank have, you. To have two lordlings in one trip is a, is a good luck. Huh? You're the second lordling to come on this vessel. Oh, who's the first? I, her, her name was Sipper. <laughs> I'm going to... I, I was in the middle of pulling my helmet off to, to treat you respectfully, but seeing that you're an old senile fool, I'm just going to discreetly stop midway and just shake my head frustratedly and walk out to the to the side of the boat. What was the name again, sorry? Captain Stello. No, not and his name, the the other Onion. Onion. No, the, the other, other noble. The Onion? other noble. Sipper. Sipper. Do I recognize that name? No, I wouldn't think so. It's not like all lords know each other. Mm. But you wouldn't have heard of Sipper. Sipper. <sighs> Lord Lords, okay. Captain Stello, at this conversation, begins to look equally weary as you. <sighs> and if you'll excuse me, we must embark shortly. I will head into the bridge. And just north of the deck of the bean barge, he heads into the captain's quarters. Robert, Captain! And the cables snake behind him. 
I'm gonna sniff, rub my scarred lips, uh, kind of spit over the side of the boat, and mutter to myself, We would never have called such a weakling lordling where I came from. What? Shortly after uh, appearing from the, the deck stairs in the middle of the ship is Onion, returning without your weapons. Hello? Your weapons are all safely secured under the deck? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask your names. I know your names on the manifest, of course, but would you like to introduce yourselves? Well, I'm the one that's called Boone on your little list. Oh, Boone, of course, yes. You're the... you're a cell sword, aren't you? Well, yes, these days I am. I just hope that uh, this one here, who called himself Cloud, feels more at company with his namesake than I ever do with mine. I'm quite short of boons these days. <laughs> very, very good. You are, you are a great hero, no, no doubt. <laughs> Does this place look like it takes heroes? Do you think heroes have to take the bean barge? It's a quite a good ship, I must say so myself. And what about you, magician? What? What's your name? Oh, my name's Cloud. And he'll, he stands up because he's still like following these leads as yeah. the captain's like going around. He's poking, prodding. He'll like, I don't know, nibble to see what it's made out of. You, like, you see them? It. Yeah. They look to be like these leathery mechanical cables that are sort of plasticky sort of material. He, like pokes them uh, every now and then. He's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Some have kind of a fluidy feeling. The others are more solid. There's a bundle of them just snaking behind Captain Stello. And as they walk in, it trails in behind him to the bridge. Well, he's finished, like, poking and prodding. Yeah. And sort of like that comical noise that he was like, okay, okay, as yeah. he pokes it. Yeah. And, like, he'll stand up and he'll say, my name's Cloud. And, and he'll lift past the cloak along his side. And you'll see attached to, like, a harness on his side is a, a small doll that has the eyes have rubbed out over time. And he, like, picks it up and holds it up. And then the, the doll goes, and I'm Nimby. And he, he does that voice? The, the doll does. Oh, the doll does. No, he, Cloud doesn't do the voice. <laughs> yeah, I just thought he was no. like, like when, <laughs> that'd be an awesome quirk to the character. I, 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 I flinch. <laughs> um, and the doll, like, it and doesn't, react necessarily, doesn't necessarily animate. It kind of, like, flops around. It doesn't look like it's a fully animated you know, doll or anything like that. But something's weird about it. I just thought it would be... I thought what you were going for is just you pick up this doll and uh, go, I know yeah, I'm Nimby. That was a thought. No, it literally was going to be, I know I'm Nimby. Wow. Yeah, but I'm Nimby. It's like Black Noir from The Boys. Well, I'm personally very disappointed that John Malkovich is not here with us. <laughs> the, the doll. <laughs> and the doll my John. name is Nimbus. <laughs> it's difficult to picture the doll being John Malkovich without the really visible like enunciation of his mouth that's like the key to his acting <laughs> so onion just looks fascinated at these quirky quirkiness and of these characters i was like uh please forgive my master he's not very sociable i'm just gonna sigh and go are we there yet oh no we we're just about to embark i would give you a tour but captain stello wants to uh have me working to get everything tip-top shape so uh i'll do my stuff you can go downstairs if you like to the the lower deck I think I will. Hopefully that place is free of talking dolls. Or you can stay up here and enjoy the view. No, I think I'll go down. The doll's head just like does a 180. <laughs> <laughs> and, Clay's and just staring off into the distance. You Ooh. see Onion just disappear to the, the rear of the ship and go to one of the big sails that attach to the spire and just checks the rigging and, and such things like that. And on the deck of the bean barge that you are now standing on, you see the stairs to the north just ahead of a giant water tank in the big shape of a bean like a pod and there's a second water tank towards the rear of the ship and in the middle of the ship is the stairs going down to deck two and there's also stairs going down to the first first class quarters which you haven't booked because you don't have money <laughs> too much money left <laughs> but yeah you've got the bridge at the top of the ship then you've got the stairs going to first class then you've got a big water tank then you've got the stairs to the second class and then another tank of water. I'm going to go downstairs. Sure. You see Boone just creep yeah. downstairs. I prefer enclosed spaces to the sky, frankly. I'm just going to start wandering around and getting lost. Sure. Maybe you follow Onion a bit, and Onion's just too fast for you to even ask a question. They just dash up to the, 
to go to the bridge and talk to <laughs> Captain Stello. Damn it, Billy, get back here. My name's Onion. Hi, Onion. I could go for some Onion. Do we have Onion soup? Onion looks very excited. Oh, yes, I'll talk all about Onion soon. I just got to have to embark first. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> okay, you're now Stan's dad. You know, <laughs> from South Park. And, yeah, Lupus Clay, you're off rushing around doing this. And lastly, we have Lonely Cloud, who is very lonely, standing on the deck of the ship. What do you do? Are you just on the deck, on the top deck, just watching it depart? Kind of just, yes, yeah, staring out. Not really uh, bothering about the surroundings very much. Yeah. And sooner or later... You just, like... <sighs> Sires majestically into the wind. And you enter the wide open. You see bluish, almost white skies speckled with cloud rigs. The air is thin and your lungs are hollow. The wind wisps away your body heat and the bean barge departs. You feel this big jolt and this weightlessness because it is now no longer attached to Sparrow's Nest and it begins floating descending into the clouds. And we go downstairs. I glance up, kind of apathetically, as I feel the barge begin to move. And uh, I'm just trying to find where they store the weapons. I'm going to enjoy the wind in my face and feel 20 years younger. I'm going to still be staring out, <laughs> out into the <laughs> just sky. Just slowly, just sitting there. But... uh There'll be like a moment where the doll's head kind of flops back, like, and then looks up and is like, do you think it's going to work? Uh, I hope so. Actually, as the ship moves, I'm going to say, let us hope that the whims of the magician do not make this thing plummet out of the sky. Boone, you descend the stairs into the cargo hold, and you see a cramped storage area filled with sealed water containers strapped to the f- walls and floors. You see an elderly looking woman she's got these robes of some kind of priestess which you would know as the robes of a brood nun and on her face she has this clay mask that looks to be maybe made out of wood, maybe clay completely covering her face just her eyes and mouth uh, open and she is sort of looking excited and giddy at the thought of travelling She is standing next to this large man, muscular, wearing this sort of leather jerkin with his chest bare in the middle. He looks very disinterested at her giddiness. This guy also has a mask made out of clay. It doesn't quite look like hers does. It's not very cracked or broken and looks like to be less well made than hers. Uh, my eyes are going to narrow. I'm going to saunter over to the table, pull my helmet off, sit it down on the table. Underneath, I've got sort of blonde hair shaved basically to a tuft on the top of my head. And uh, I'm going to say, So, which one of you is the lift and which one of you is the ballast? Oh, hello, dearie. I didn't see you there. Are you uh, another traveller? Are you crew? I'm sorry, I'm not good with faces. No, no, just passing through on this old thing. Are you on a journey? Don't you have to know where you're going to uh, be on a journey? Yes, of course. It is very exciting. I am very happy. Oh, and why is that? Did you hear the, the century brood is unearthing a decade early? Oh, is that so? It is strange times, a new circle for the world. I, I grit my teeth and clench my fists. They can sort of, they're sort of cracking. And I decide I shouldn't talk to this old woman anymore because I'm going to get even more angry. So instead, I talk to the big guy. <laughs> you see this big guy also just looking disinterested, sort of looking around the deck. What do you say? And are you excited about the new brood? What? The Amargo coming early. How do you feel? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great. This can't get enough. The old woman is she's all to the, the clouds and back. <laughs> and he looks away from you. You don't have to lie to me. I understand. Are you calling me a liar? No. 
He puffs out his chest and his attention snaps to you now. It sort of puffs up. Looks like you both lift and ballast. Calm down, big man. Genmo is not a liar. I'm sure he's not. And Boone is not someone that calls people liars. So why don't we just both calm down? What did he say his name was? Genmo. 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 My name is Genmo. You are Boone. Yes, Boone of Tektite. Ever heard of the place? No. No, neither is anyone. And they won't. Not anymore. Do you need anything? Well, I thought I needed conversation, but I guess I don't. Well, you won't get it here. Bother me no further. I'll leave you to the old woman. No. You two are made for each other. Mm. I'm going to look for the... Uh... Menfa. You didn't ask for the girl's name. I don't care. But this old woman just hums to herself. I have disdain for brood nuns. Mm. Or anyone that worships the Imago. Mm. I don't like him. Yeah, you know the brood nuns as basically... They are caretakers of the Imago. They prepare bodies for consumption. They leave out the pyres. They sing to them. They, they're connected yep. with the circle of the earth. Unfortunately, Boone is the last of the warriors of Tektite. And Tektite, which, fun fact audience, is the name for the obsidian that you find around a meteorite impact. They were a militant civilization that was planning on retaking the earth from uh, the giant bugs. But in their excavation, because they're an underground kingdom, they, they accidentally awoke uh, a dormant swarm and were completely destroyed. And he was the only survivor. And he's pretty much got no hope left anymore. And he doesn't like the fact that people are adjusting to this new world and trying to live in harmony with the bugs. He doesn't think that he can do anything about it, but he's, he's cranky. So yeah, Genmo looks to be a brood brother. Yeah. The males usually look after the, the nuns and, and do more of the labor work and things like that. They assistants or apprentices to the brood nuns. Yep. So yeah. After that little jaunt, Boone, you walk away and down the stairs comes Lupus, yep. Lord. I'll come down, sure. You come down and you are now standing on the cargo deck. To the north, you see just a wall because... The first class is entered through the top of the ship. But it looks to be, it might be the wall of the first class. Don't just walk through. I'll just keep going. Sure. There are, there are more. There's a ladder going down into another lower deck of the ship, which you think is a mechanical deck. After a few minutes, now that you've congregated there, Lonely Cloud, are you wafting yourself down into the cargo deck as well? Yeah, I'll, I'll just walk past and... Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Uh, just shuffling on through. And then uh, he'll get to the big brood brother. He's like, sorry. And like pats him on the shoulder and he's just this big chalk print on his arm. Okay. <laughs> Menfa, the old woman, looks at you through her clay mask and goes, Oh, hello. It's good to see an, another magician here. You're a magician? Oh, of course. The brood nuns all... No, wait. I can't be a magician. No, we have many magicians work for us. Oh, if she was a magician, she'd be a body hopper. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. That's why, sorry. She, that's why I would assume she's wearing a clay mask to hide her disfigured, falling apart, yes. and to face. Yes. yes. No, Menfa is an old brood nun, and she spiritually connected, but she doesn't have magic. But you basically... You, I live on Imago poop. You live on the chalk that is supplied. He works very gracefully for a man that's covered in the shit made of human pieces. She looks very curiously at your chalk-covered robes and says, You might want to clear some of that off. It might attract the wandering Imago. What kind of species likes their own shit? They're attracted to it. They eat it, of course. I thought the chalk was what the byproduct is from eating the bones of people. Uh... Come on, Andrew. Kind of. <laughs> Come on, Andrew. Get get with the law. All these years, I've been scared of a bug that eats its own poo. We're going to have yes, to cut it, that out. No, no. It does consume chalk. It consumes... As well as dead bodies. And converts it into chalk. But it can it eat It converts chalk. it into chalk. Yeah. yeah. So it eats... I was When I was reading it's, it, it's... It's like honey. Yeah, honey, well, no. Yeah. People, people who like eat food that were produced in the earth, the earth is so full of psychic energy... Yeah that it imbues itself into people's bones and then the Imago eat the bones of the dead and then when it poops it out, hmm. this mystical bone dust gets used as chalk. 
Yeah, if they can't find fresh dead bodies to consume, they'll eat chalk. Oh. Yeah, it's like honey. Honey is made of nectar, but yeah. um, um, and it's bee poop. Hmm. Yeah, it's the malted amargo shells is forms your magical chalk yeah. sticks. But it is also used in magical engines. There's a chalk engine powering the ship and the yeah. Sky City. And Imago do come to consume the chalk as well. Yeah. Because it is bone dust. They can sure. re-eat it. Yeah. So when she says that, I'll be like, better turn the ship off then. Yes. It is not g- good to cage that so much. We rely on chalk too much. Anyway, bye. And Onion says... You want that tour? I can give you a tour. Yeah. The three of you? Yeah. Okay. Well, of course, here we have the uh, the lower deck. This is the cargo deck. To the south, we have the galley, which is where I prepare the food. Is that where the onion soup is? Oh, yes. Are you familiar with onions? Uh, yes. I'm an onion farmer myself. Fourth generation. Uh. We're all called Onion. That's... The whole family. A little confusing. But I've seen enough of the old Onion farm. Well, what do you call each other? Onion. Well, what if you say... What if you say, Onion, come here and there's five of you? We all get confused sometimes. There, I have many brothers and sisters. Well, I'm surprised there's ever a time when you're not confused. God, imagine if they had twins. I suppose there's layers to this whole thing. Like, <laughs> Onion looks very excited. Did you know there are a dozen of onion varieties? Yellow onions, red, white, scallions, torpedo onions, pearl no. onions, shallots. No. Then, of course, you've got the other members of the Allium family. You've got your chives, your leeks, your growlers. Not many onions grow under the rust bucket. <laughs> Did you <laughs> Google onions? Yeah, I Googled a bit of onions. <laughs> anyway, I've seen enough of the onion farm. No worldly and dangerous fellow who has dirt under their fingernails or a sack of onions over their shoulders. I'm here for adventure. I'll tap the boy... Whimsically on his shoulder. That's boy. Oh, tap the, the, the child whimsically on the <laughs> shoulder <laughs> and just say... You're a teenager. Go back home and just walk off. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. You see, don't like onions. The, here in the no- the south of the deck, we've got the the crew toilet. Are they just pointing from the same spot or...? No, they're leading you around. Oh. Yeah. Crew toilet, you want to go I, see the toilet? No, 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 I just don't go through... I don't leave this room. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> he just walks off. You just stay there. Yeah, you guys walk off. I, I just, I don't go yeah. with you. You've always seen the upper deck, but down the ladder just there is the mechanical deck. Don't need to go down there, but you see your weapons are stored in the weapons locker near the near the engine. That seems like a dangerous place to put a weapons locker. And Lonely Cloud, you're not interested mm. in this tour. Um, I, you just see him stop at the door to the next room and then just stare and just he's just standing there. So you see Genmo, who was looking disinterested before, looks like he's listening to every word Onion is saying, but not trying not to pay attention. You're just watching these people as Onion's giving the tour. Okay. And at what point do we earn your trust enough to get our weapons back? Oh, it's standard policy for all weapons to be stowed. Safely, of course. We don't want any accidents on board the ship. But how do we know that you won't try to rob us? I won't try to rob us. This is the Captain Stello's reputation. Well, your We're reputation reputable... can remain intact if you killed us as well. I'm offended, sir. I don't care. And you've managed to offend Onion, but they quickly snap back to a jovial attitude. And whoever's listening, they chat on for Onions. I can't stand any more of this Onion talk. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to go to the weapons locker. Slink away. So, Boone, you head down the stairs into the mechanical deck. With a with a throw of my my tattered blue cloak. If, if they're leaving the line of sight, Cloud will just kind of lift his hand up coyly like a question, waiting for Onion. Oh, yes, you had a question? Can you take Nimbus with you? Oh. And then holds Nimbus uh, out. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Shakily grabs this doll. Oh, I'm doll. looking forward to this. They flinch. Uh, okay. And then as you turn away. You're friendly. I like you. Onion sort of passes it to Lupus. Uh, you right to take this? Uh, it creeps me out. What the f- Hi, I'm Nimby. Hi, Nimby. And Onion says to you, Lupus, 
Oh, excuse me, how rude. You must come in to the first class quarters and say, uh, give your blessing to the other lordling. Uh, it is customary. Can Nimbus come? Yes. All right, come on. And you head up the stairs. Never fails to amaze me how sickening I find sky people. And we have Boone descending the stairs into the mechanical deck. Lonely Cloud is wafting his way through the cargo deck. Um, does it doesn't leave that room. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it, there's something stopping them from leaving that room. Is it all mechanical down here? Kind of like machine-like? Well, before we pass to you, let's pass to Lord Lupus Clay as you descend into the first-class quarters. Onion leads you there and then sort of lets you through, lets you in, but doesn't follow. Mm. A lord must have its privacy. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> Careful with the stairs. Uh, we don't want any hips broken. No, no, that's good. Very good, boy. It's all right. Very good. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. And you head down the stairs. You creep down into the observation room, first class only. You're hit by the overwhelming smell of sickness, <coughs> blood, and death. That's not good. I get the feeling this would have been thematically more resonant if you weren't like an old, <laughs> dusty <laughs> cretin. I'll, I'll sort of walk into the room. And I'm assuming your eyesight isn't too good, but your nose confirms in the corner is piles of twisted blankets and torn sheets that look bloodied and tossed aside and in this semicircular couch you see Sipper, a female lordling laying back covered in a blanket but the figure of someone half his age he'll sort of stand upright a little bit more and tap his little stick on the ground a little bit and you just hear this cracks of all of his bones as he postures his gesture he says, oh, this is not good. And I'll just sort of wander over to it, to the Simba and... Sipper. Sipper. Simba. Simba. And I'll uh, check a pulse. Oh, she's, a, she's alive. She greets you. Oh, okay. I thought she was dead. She smells like death in here. I'll but she, she regards you and goes, oh, hello. It is nice to see another lord. Even though you are not dressed like one, I can tell. Dear child, what is wrong with you? I am fine. You would know the place of a lordling is to duel when their honor is tested. I am fine. And you see Sipper's body is marked with countless old scars, bone fragments, and she's twitching. How old is she? She looks... She could be 30, but looks 40, 45. She's just ragged, pale, grey-white skin. She looks you... like a living corpse. I've got medicine as a skill. Roll, yeah. a, roll a fear save. A fear save. Okay. First roll of the game. So you... At you're long in, last. Jeepers, creepers. You're encountering this smell and this wounded person that looks like the smell of death has put you a bit off center have i met a body hopper before i would say you wouldn't know if you did i wouldn't know if I they did. are very good at disguising okay. yeah 14 under 75 you are fine yeah not failing that anytime so tell me what is your name i'm lord lupus clay and what are you a lord of Lupus. Probably haven't heard of it. It's a small buffer zone called Cross Sword. Cross Sword. Yes, there may have been an estate of that name in the old lands. No. I... I am Sipper. I am a lord of failed ambition. Failed ambition. Is that a place or is that just a thing? It sounds like a title. Do I recognize it? It doesn't ring a bell of anything specific. To your left, you see the first class bathroom, which just looks like an airship toilet. Have you... When was the last time you dueled, child? Dude? Yes. 
I have been a part of many duels, but I'm afraid I will not be able to do that anymore. What is the matter? Please, leave me be. I've had enough. I am weary. Very well. You want to do that medicine? You want to try to investigate? Yeah. What do you say to her to get her to... Uh, from my lands, we were taught to study other things apart from swordplay. I chose medicine. I... If it's okay, I might be able to ease your comfort a bit. I agree, Lord Ling. And I'll sort of investigate to see what's going on. It looks like as you remove the cover, her arm has been severed. No, that'll do it. Her left arm. Oh, I can't fix that. You're f- <laughs> and it looks like a sorry. It looks like a clean saber wound is now in place where the arm should be. Please take a stress as you have witnessed a gruesome wound. Dear God, child, have you not been taught of a tourniquet? Why is you? What? I'm afraid I didn't have the hands to tie it. And you see a worn crest is pinned to her shoulder, and you see you actually do see a bandage, but it's badly wrapped as if someone one-armed tried to do it, and she just covered it with a sheet. I'll inspect the wound to see if it's infected or if there's any ongoing issues. Sure, let's try. You, This person looks to be losing blood rapidly, and unless you... Oh, no, I'm a tourniquet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take you, that bandage and make a tourniquet. Unless you do something successfully, she will be mortally wounded. Uh, so let's, you're feeling the pressure now. Let's get a bit of a, a, a skill check. Uh, he's going to get a rod and he's going to put it through the bandage and he's going to twist it until it actually tightens it off. Yeah, and, yeah. Then you, and then you tie off the rod. Go for it. Mine plus 10 for a skill or 5 for a skill? There's advantage for your skills in Cloud Empress. Okay. Any skill you're trained in gives you advantage. So please roll two D100s and take the better. And am I, is it just a flat or am I adding mind or what's the... You're using your skill medicine, giving you advantage to this roll. What am I rolling against? Mind? You could roll mind or heart, basically on your empathy or your intellect, your mind, let's say. Well, they both succeed, but we'll go with the 21. Good. You manage to stop the bleeding. And yeah. slowly you see her colour return slightly. You have been trained well, Lord Ling. I thank you for your care. This is just the, this is just the begin. This is basics. Uh, you sit here. I'm gonna go and get some cloth to clean this shit. Sipper regards you, and she looks towards the bathroom. You may wash these bandages, and I think there are some clean clothes in the bathroom. There, to the side. Is, you want to get changed? No, you said to. Wash the wound, the bandage, oh, yeah, did you not? Yes, I was just going to use a towel. Yes, if you want to clean it, there's some towels in the bathroom, as yeah, I th- said. that's where I'm going. Okay, you go to the bathroom. Yeah. Safe journeys. Is there, like, hot water on this thing, or is this a call for onion to get some boiled water? It would be hot water. Hot it's water? It's like a mechanical tap. It takes a while to heat up, but it goes... And heats out. When you enter this bathroom, you see a... You know, you see a few things. <laughs> you see if You've seen a few things now. You see the bath... See a room? There's even a toilet. A toilet? Toilet. Okay. You see a meager but clean airship toilet. And you see a single molded plastisteel toilet and a plastisteel sink. And you see the towels and whatnot. But up against the toilet, you see what looks like to be a rifle. About as long as your leg. Leaning against the toilet in the corner. Beautiful rifle. It's a nice piece you've got in here, love. Uh, Thank you, that is my family's antique heirloom. Uh, You said you were, uh, where was it from again, sorry? His old, old mind's not like what it used to be. I am from, and we fade out to the mechanics deck. Got out of that one, didn't I? (laughs) 
<laughs> Quick, go back. What the f was it called again? But what about Josh? What's Josh doing? Josh, did you tee up a scene for yourself? I think you just sent the doll. For the doll's out. there to learn what he can't. <laughs> the f***ing yeah. doll, I forgot about that. Yeah, the there's, there's, you, real, don't, you don't realise Nimbus has been listening this whole, Nimbus has been listening the this whole time. The doll is now sentient as well. Well, it's haunted. Yes, it's it a haunted, haunted doll. Wow. Yeah. So that's why it's able to talk. So lonely, <laughs> lonely Cloud. Why do I know this? Lonely Cloud is you're on the deck of the cargo and... Uh, yeah, I'm either in that room that leads down by stairway or on the top deck. Yeah. Nowhere else. Sure. And we cut to Boone in the mechanics bay. Boone, mm -hmm. right around you in this mechanics bay is another ladder leading down into plain sky below the ship. You hear the rumbling of the chalk engines and you see this thopter, this little solar-powered flyer down to the center. Looks like it's accessible from the ladder. Very precarious, but nonetheless accessible. Hey, guys. See ya. I've got Thopter piloting. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yes. Holy crap. So you see this Thopter I'm not going to do it yet. Ship. Just when shit hits the fan. Yeah. But around this ladder going up as well is escape pods. You see these evacuation tubes that look like they can comfortably fit two, maybe three, and maybe four if you're willing to just go cram. 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 Yeah. I just want to point out, right, when I saw Thopter pilot, yeah. my brain didn't think helicopter. What'd you think? My brain thought, has anyone played Morrowind? You know the yeah. little the little Ninxes, the little like rideable bug okay. mount things? Something like that, like a little bug mount. That's cool. You see four escape pods. Okay. And then to the north, you see the front engine. And you can go through the door if you want. It's like a glass door with I, a little... I just like want to, a plastic steel door with a glass window. I just want to find my bow. <laughs> you search around. You go south into the, the end of the ship. And you Desperate see to find it. The rear engine. And in that room, you see a cabinet. I try to open the cabinet. You open the door and you see the cabinet. What weapons are in there? It is locked as you try to... Looks like this elaborate key lock bolted on to this toolbox slash weapons cabinet. All right. Well, how is a thopter attached? Is it by a cable or is it just flying autonomously? Looks like it's just docked underneath the... Oh, so it's not in the sky. It's just in a little... No, no, it's floating. It's flying in the sky. Yeah. It's just attached by these mechanical struts accessible by a ladder. Like, oh. a, like a glider, like it's gliding... Yep. Yeah, it's, if you look down, you see its propellers yep. going through the wind. I'm going to climb down into it just because I want to have a sit down in it. Okay, so when you go up to look at the ladder, it's about 20 foot down into the cockpit, and it looks like it's to be very, very precarious, very dangerous. If there was a sudden jolt to the ship, you might need to test yourself or avoid falling. Yep. Um, you could definitely... Things seem to be quite steady now. There's that slow feeling of descent, but yeah. it is very smooth and controlled. I'm a warrior. I'm brave. I, I climb down. You climb down, and you do not have to make a body save at this time. Yeah. And you sit on top of this scout thopter, which yep. it is known as. And for the first time, kind of feel at peace. You're surrounded by the clouds and the hum of the chalk engine in front and behind you just going... Yeah. I pull my cloak up off of my arm and my skin between the shoulder plate and the arm plate, there are tattooed bands of color around my arm because in Tektite, the way they trained their soldiers was there was a prison, an oppressive prison. And he went into that prison when he was just 12 years old and the colors represent the layers of the sacred crater, which is like the, the, the center of Tektite, and they're the colors. The further out you get, the more missions you get given beyond the kingdom. And the last tier is the blue tier, which is the last band on his arm, and that's for the pilots. Those are the people that actually fly. And it's been ages since he's been able to actually fly on his own, because 
after the Tektite people were destroyed and their technology laid to waste. But for the moment, he can just pretend that he's a scouting pilot for the Tektite Empire once again. And uh, he sort of smiles, sitting in his little, sitting on top of his little glider. You hear a noise from up top. Yep. And passing by the ladder, you see Genmo walk past. Doesn't notice you. And we cut back to the middle deck. Lord Lupus Clay, you have tourniqueted Sipper's wound and it looks like to be stabilised her condition. I thank you, Lord. I will need rest now. How long have you been missing at your hand? My arm. Yeah, that one. Yes, I was in a duel. I did not go well. Dear God, girl, tell me this was not like this for days. No, it is. It looks rather recent to you. Yeah, good. I need my rest, please. Yes, yes. Um, I thank you. Yes, sleep. Sleep. Um, I kind of don't want to just leave you here by yourself. Um, you can leave the doll to that's comfort her. F- terrifying. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be out in the, in the hallway. I'll sing if you need me. Of course. Please don't die on me. Clear skies to you, Lordling. And to you. You go up to the main deck and Lonely Cloud... As you leave the, the room with Sipper, like out of Sipper's earshot, you're like, who do you think did it? Uh, who knows? Lords like their duelings. But they'd be on the ship, right? Mm, we haven't been in here that long. It's a recent boon, but perhaps not that recent. I mean, they'd be dead if it wasn't... Well, that was my thoughts exactly, but, you know... You're a hero. Oh, yes. Um, I hope no one tries to kill you. No, that would suck, wouldn't it? But that's all right. I've got you to protect me, don't I? Oh, I, I don't do very much. I need Master to be of any use. Oh, well, we better go hang by the Master then. The ship begins to turn as you enter the spread. You enter a curtain of clouds the color of mayonnaise. There are pockets of yellow acid clouds that are dangerous but avoidable. And you see under Captain Stello's expert piloting, you'll manage to weave your way through. Boone, you start to feel the shudder and you see the acid clouds rising up and the ship starts to turn and the thopter goes... All right, time to get back up the ladder. And you get back up. But I'm looking to see if uh, Genmo is down here. You do not see Genmo. Hmm. I go back to the cabinet. You go back to the cabinet, and you see where the lock was, it is now bashed in and fallen off. I nod and scratch my little beard, nervously rub my scarred lips as I do, and I say, Oh, Genmo, what are you so afraid of? And, uh, can I see my bow and my arrows? You see your bow. You see a walking stick that sort of looks like a dart pipe. Oh, no, I've got my walking stick. Where's your dart pipe? It's the walking stick. Oh, you're... But yeah. it's a disguised dart oh, pipe. So your darts are in here. Yes. Yeah. You see a bandolier with the, or just the darts of a blowpipe. You see two flare guns with a box of extra flares. And that is all. Okay, well, I'll grab my... My bow and my arrows. You grab your bow and your arrows. And, and my axe. And uh, just for um, just for courtesy, I'll grab the darts as well. Give them back to you. Sure. So you just grab all your weapons again. Yeah. Are you hiding them in yes. your cloak? Yes, yeah. I'm hiding them in okay. my big cloak. And uh, I go back upstairs. You go back upstairs. Now where is that? I will. Do you not going to do anything else in this area? Well, I'm going to look. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at the engines then. See if they're working normally. The southern one that you were just in. Is humming along swimmingly. Looks like it's stable and working. Yeah. Then, John? Then I go to the northern one. You go to the northern one, and as you go to touch the door, it burns your hand. Ah! This heat is just coming off the door. If you look through the little circular window, you see this engine with this big plasticine sort of compartment 
and another little window in the center, all these gauges and steam things going off, and in the center is a spinning piece of chalk, glowing red. Is this normal? Are you? Have you got any mechanical or chalk no. engines? I mean, I can fly. Mm. You would know if you were flying something with a chalk engine, this would be dangerous and unpredictable. Okay. Like it could fail. It's running hot. Crazy old man. I'm going to go back up. And you go back up. And who does he see on deck? You see Menfa, who is looking giddy, and she looks over to you at anyone who's listening. Boone, you're the only one, maybe the only one left here. Menfa says, it is almost time. How do you know when it's time? The clouds have changed. We will enter the spread soon. We are just going in. Okay, yeah. We need to we need to stop. We need to turn around. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to snap my fingers at Onion. All right. Hello. The north engine's burning up. The, the what? The north engine's running way too hot. Oh no. Captain Stello assured me it's running fine. It's, have you had a look at it? It's a little hot, but it's usually it's we've we've driven like like this before. It's 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 fine. And it's just the northern engine that has this problem? Yes, it just runs a little hot. The the, the rear engine takes care of it. And <laughs> <laughs> just when when we're carrying this much water, it, it kind of overloads slightly, but it's we haven't had any trouble. Alright. I'm gonna go back up to the deck. You go back up to the deck. And you see Genmo there, you see Lonely Cloud and Lupus Clay. Perhaps speaking to each other, holding a doll, or not. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, going if you've to. Returned. I've taken the doll back. And okay. Have you remained on the deck, the top deck, either the deck or that lower room? Okay. Which is it? I was just going to stay in the lower room. Yeah. You can yeah. go back down and chill with Menfa. I wasn't going to go too far away from. What's her bloody name again? Sipa. Sipa. Yeah. You can go back down to check on her. Well, can. So you guys are all gone from the deck. <laughs> it looks like they're gone. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was hoping to have your back up when I confront Genmo. <laughs> you see Genmo standing closely by the bridge, looking out over the railing. The old woman says it's time soon. What? Time. Yes, time. Time will come. We are entering the spread. Oh yeah, we sure are. What's your deal? Why are you here? Why are you traveling? Don't know. Guess I'm uh, trying to sniff out crazy people and stop them from killing everyone. That is strange to say. Do you distrust any of the others? Well, you'd be surprised how often it happens. Are you looking to make some coin? It depends how I make the coin. I might be a sellsword, but I still have standards. What is your price? It's not about the price, it's about what you want me to do. Who am I killing? We do not need to kill anyone. We only need to take the ship. Take it where? Once we take it, where do we drive it? We can divert course to the feeding grounds. So the old woman's in on this too? The old woman is foolish. She would wants to go to the feeding grounds. She thinks I am accompanying her. But I am there to steal an Imago egg. This will make me rich. This will make us rich. I am willing to cut you in 20%. You assist me when things go down. I rub my scarred lips. Boy, you're a sweet talker. Was that you that messed with the engine? The engine is a problem. Well, yeah, didn't you notice? I do not know how to fly. I'm just going to take the helm. You don't know how to fly? Well, I do know how to fly. Then that's perfect. You're the perfect man for the job. Cloud will be, like, going around the other way to try and find those cables. Sure. Now that you're in the cargo hold, you saw the cables that come out of the bridge. So there's no cables in the cargo hold. Yeah, no, I'm saying he's going back upstairs. Oh, at to this look point for in the time... Cables. You head back upstairs, the centre of the ship, and you see Boone and Genmo just whispering to each other. 
No whispering. If there's no one else on deck, we mm. can talk normal. What do you... Genmo shuts up as soon as Cloud walks on. We will talk later. I will return. All right. When we pass below the clouds, I would give you a signal. And Genmo disappears. Were they next to the cables or something? The cables are gone. Oh. They follow the captain back into the bridge. Yeah, he was just going to go look for the cables. Yeah, they're gone. Okay. And you see Boone standing just at the railing outside the captain's quarters and bridge. Do you talk to each other? Did you have any weapons stored downstairs? Mm. I just have Nimby. And... Oh, yes, the f***ing doll. Never mind. And... And... And the Fleur rifle. Oh, the I rifle. I don't care for it very much. It's just to scare off anything dangerous. All right, well, the uh, the cupboard's open down there, so you can get it if you want. That's okay. Didn't Thank you grab a flare rifle? I didn't say I grabbed the flare rifle. I only grabbed the darts. Oh, rip. Lonely cloud. Well, I thought you're a magician, <laughs> so you can do other cool stuff. Cool. If I cast enough spells, I'll die. Yeah, but <laughs> you, can, you, you can tell Lonely Cloud that the weapons locker is unlocked and where yeah, to find yeah. their weapons. It, it's unlocked. You can go downstairs. You might have to um, do that soon. Okay. Why? I'm thinking about whether I should cause a panic. I will tell the <laughs> audience uh, the Empire of Tektite valued honor very highly. So I'm probably not going to team up with this guy. But you've been in prison, John. Yeah. You've been in prison. Yeah, but it was a it was a prison where honor was the only way out. Fair enough. It was the emperor's training ground. Yes, yeah. he was 12. Since I was 12, yeah. yeah. I'm very loyal to this ghost of a thing that no longer exists. So you're going to knock on the door to Captain Stello? It's just a really serious daycare. That's why the stripes are all colored. <laughs> yeah. Well, the captain seems like an old nut. I'd rather just deal with the people that I think are competent. So I'm going to say to Lonely Cloud, I'm going to say, I think we've been sabotaged. I think uh, that Genmo, that big monster in the mask, is planning on selling us out and feeding us to the bugs. Oh, that's okay. Is it? I don't plan on staying on the ship anyway. How are you going to get off? Um, I suppose that's why I'm here. Well, if you Find want to get how. off, <laughs> if you want to get off, I can fly. There's a glider down there. Oh, that's okay. There are pods, but we should do something quickly before. I really just it gets wanted real. to test something out. Um, I could do it now, but it seems early. I wanted to wait till I'm really far away this time. I think you should wait. I don't like the sound of that. Whatever it is, where is the uh, where's the old lordling? Uh, he was downstairs helping an injured person. The doll just, like, kind of flops its head out the cloak. Sure, thanks. Mm. I'm going to, at a quickened pace, still clutching my bow and arrows underneath my cloak. Uh, and then Nimby's like, what are you waiting for? Go follow him. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. And then just kind of, like, follows. And you go to the stairs of the first class? Yeah, but I stop at the first door again. Okay. I love both of these characters. And we cut back to Lord Lupus Clay in the chambers of Sipper, and you're keeping an eye on her. And over this last 15 minutes or half an hour or so, you've been talking to her. Lupus, mm. I'm wondering if you can help me with something. Sure, what do you need? I need to get off this barge. Hang on. John is showing us an image across the table. What is it, John? You want to explain to the audience? I'm trying to draw the characters. Trying to draw really, the characters? Excellent. Really good. I was going to say, instead, the, where those scales are, just imagine that the cloak like, like wraps around the okay. neck. We'll get there. We've got plenty of time. Sipper says, I need to get off this barge before it lands. Can you help me? Wh why? What? I can't be on this barge when it lands. Why? What's wrong with the barge? There's nothing wrong with the barge. There's just a situation that would not be good for me. 
Earlier, you addressed yourself as a title. What does that title mean? It means everything I try fails the expectations of my betters. But I will take things into my own hands and finally be free. Underneath, in the mechanics bay, there is a solar-powered thopter. We can take it and leave. Do you know how to fly? Yes. Okay, then. Um, don't you don't you dare. <laughs> With one f***ing arm, too. <laughs> I'm not able to fly. I, Obviously, I, she looks I, at her arm. I, I just looked down at her like, I, I, I understand that this must be a pressing situation for you, but you're not in the state to fly. But we are lords, and when there's a will, there is a way. Leave it to me. I will find us a pilot. As you're traveling through the clouds, we pass onto the upper deck. Boon, Lonely Cloud, you're just about to descend these stairs. And suddenly you, you hear this noise from a, below in the clouds. And there is smoke rising up just below you. You look over the railing and you see another cloud ship far below with these giant cicadas swarming it and attaching themselves to the hull. And Menfa steps onto the deck and she says, It is time. She looks below and sees the Amargo swarming this ship and you hear the sirens from the deck. I'm going to make a fear save. Everyone uh, make a fear save. Yeah. I'm going to make one a disadvantage because I'm freaking uh, hate these bugs because they killed all of my people. As you see another sky ship, a barge being attacked by the Imago. I just failed that. So stress goes up. Stress goes up. 52 on 75, I pass. You got 75? 75. He's a noble. I'm He's a noble. A lord, lordling. And Lonely Cloud? Oh, I 100% fail. I got a 70. You definitely fail that. Please all gain a stress. So, as a base stat, yes. with modifiers, Lordlings pretty much get a 60 in fear before yeah. you even roll. You're strong. <laughs> oh, bright lights, I can't do this again. Onion comes on deck. Oh, I was going to actually scream out for Onion to give me a hand. Yeah. So you are now all on deck. The only one missing from deck is Genmo and Sipper. No, I, I are you wouldn't, still down there? I wouldn't leave Sipper alone. So you're below deck. So I'd be there. screaming for Onion to come down and help me grab her because I'm obviously decrepit. I wouldn't yeah. be able to pick her up. Onion comes on deck holding a flare rifle. Someone's been into the weapons locker, but I got the flare rifle. We've got bigger problems. Here, lonely cloud. You, yours. Take yours. We'll need it. Oh. Yeah, thanks. Like I said, no offense. I'm going to run down and try to get to the glider immediately. You run down and try to get to the glider oh, immediately. I, Cloud will grab your scruff and then just drag you downstairs and then grab onion scruff and drag them downstairs as well. Okay, I'm who's sorry, grabbing what? I'm sorry, magician. <laughs> you trying to grab me? That's a save, surely. Covered in chalk. Yeah, make a contested strength. I mean, it's a pretty... um. Actually, no, can I do speed? Sure. sure. Oh, you, you can, can do away. speed. I'll do speed to get out of your grip. I'm not going to flee. I'm going to bring the glider up to the to the deck. I'm going to fly it out and try and land that, it on the... That wouldn't seat many people. It's probably, what, one, two seater? Looks to be when you saw it. Also, John, yeah. remember I said when the ship started to bucket and rick it? I'll, I'll jump. That body save? <laughs> jump. Yeet. If you fail the body save, you will plummet to the earth. But you can take the risk. He's, he's shushing me. Speed. Sure. I got 50 under 60. I passed. Uh, I, f I failed. Please take a stress. Critical fail? No. Then you are stressing out. 75. Yeah, we have to go this way. And I'll yeah, I'll grab Onion and I'll grab. Onion standing on top of the deck, holding the flare rifle, pointing down below. Uh, no, not... Get off me, you chalk soak freak! Not off the sky, this way. Um, and then they get to the... If they follow along if they get to the door um i need help what's what? this plan of yours i need help to to uh we need to find the other guy i can't go through the door 
It's a... And, and like the doll head like flops out. It's like, it's a magician thing. He needs help getting through doors. Which, which door are we going through? <laughs> the <laughs> one that leads towards Sipper and Lupus. Okay, oh, I'll, you're just going down to them. Is yeah. it like a vampire or some shit? I'll, no. I'll drag okay. you through the door. You now Thank all you. find yourselves in the first class quarters and you see Sipper. You smell the blood. How do you guys react? Uh, what? What? Huh? Onion, what is going on? Onion's on the bridge. Oh, oh I thought, I, thought I was grabbing onion with me. I'll make another oh, onion's coming through. as well. Yeah. Onion's saying, we need to be, I need to talk to Stello. Is that the captain? Yeah. I, I, um, I'll make another fear save at the, the person with a missing arm. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Lonely Cloud, please. And Boone. If Onion goes behind, I was like, bring the captain downstairs. Critical success. Oh, nice. I go back down to one. Ooh. You can remove a stress. We'll allow that. So home, mm. House rule. I rolled a five. Rolled a five. This is a sordid mess. They're, they're swarming. The Imago is swarming beneath us. We have to do something. And through the windows of the observation deck, you see an Imago flying up from the bottom of the clouds, heading directly towards the bean barge. We can leave, but I wanted to leave with the captain and that nice person. I'm going to fumble with my bow and just start getting ready a shot. Onion, grab grab Lady Sipper. Everyone who saw this Imago also roll a fear save uh, right I now. Did Sorry, I just want to see how the interaction turned out when I asked sure. Onion to grab the captain and come meet us downstairs. Oh. Onion wouldn't have come back down, would have stayed on the deck, listened to the captain. Oh. Mm. I guess Why would they take orders from you? I guess they'll but, die. But, That's all right. Why? Well, because I was going to save them. How? Well, that's f- for the audience to find out, okay, Andrew. Okay. Try to spoil us. <laughs> All right. I don't know. But I yeah, failed the save. They wouldn't. You failed a save. Please take another yes, stress. Yes, I'm back to two. How about the rest of you? 21 on 75. You're good and lonely. I got 18. 18. You have it. Um, I wanted to leave with the nice person and the captain, but they're not here. <gasps> Should we go back and get them? Uh, 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 what is your plan? Oh, I was going to take us away. You hear shouts coming from the deck of the ship. Never mind that. We need to get to the pods. Oh, no, no, I agree. We should get away. There are pods down there. Bo- um, uh, Mr. Boone, was it? Yes. Grab her. And then I'll walk into the <laughs> into the bathroom. She and goes, ah, ah. The doll is like, please someone get the nice person back. I'll, I'll run into the bathroom and... What are you doing? Grab the rifle. I, you I, grab the wi- yeah, rifle. I, I, I kneel, nod my head awkwardly, say, Beg your pardon, my lady, we have to be going. There's going no- where? There's <laughs> nowhere to go. Well, remember how earlier you said you wanted to get off this ship? Yes, but how? We're getting the hell off this ship. I, okay. I can get us off this ship. I just... Are they going to die? Uh, the onion and the captain. Probably... Uh, can they come with us? You can go up there and get them. Uh, We're going to the pod. I can, actually. I can't go that way. Pods will take four maximum. Well, there's four pods. Oh, there's four pods. But you didn't investigate them I closely. can take us back to the docks. <gasps> you hear shouts coming from the top of the ship. What do you do? I want to get to the glider. I'll make the body save. I don't care. You are carrying an injured person. Yeah, I'll take her. Okay. You're carrying Sipper? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you go upstairs. It just says draw the outline of a door. You may open it to yeah. travel. This is a spell? So I can open, yeah, I can open a, a, a magical door in the floor and it will allow travel to a place that I've been. Yeah, that you've been? That I've been. I think the chalk spells are pretty much your spell for you, right? Well, it's not like it's a 50-page booklet on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've got a spell that can open a door and leave the ship. I've got a spell that can open a magical door. And you'll go back to... But I want to save the nice onion because the NIMBY really likes onion. Yeah, you don't hear... You don't know what's going on yet with onion upstairs. That's why he's like really adamant. I'm being like, I really really want to save onion. Sure. NIMBY likes them. You can go check on onion. I can't. You can't? Okay. I can't go through the door. So no one's going to go up on deck? Uh, you no. hear the deck being rocked side to side and shuddering the whole barge. I'm not going up there. There's Imago up there, and I'm clearly not. 
I, I, I can't. Physically, I can't face one of these bugs again. Sure. I want to go downstairs. I want to get to the glider. But you have to go up the stairs. You know what I mean? You have to leave the, the, the first class. You have to go upstairs. I have to go back upstairs to get downstairs? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't remember that being a... The well, stairs are in the middle of the ship. If we yeah. end up, if everyone ends up leaving the room, I'll just have to stop at the door and stare again. Okay, well... What do we got to do? Do we need to grab you and drag I'm you I'm going to grab it? you and shove you through the front door, <laughs> go. up the stairs. You go up the stairs. Holding you in front of me. Is who's carrying Simba? And then, like, as he's, like, being rushed forward, he's, like, turns his head. I kick like, you through the door. I'm carrying Simba. Thank you for Simba. helping me. Don't kick me. You see, on the upper deck of the bean barge, Onion is slumped against the door of the bridge. Genmo is nowhere to be seen. And just flying above the fuselage and landing on the ship is a large Imago adult. <laughs> Cell sword! And I'll just toss the rifle at him. And you just see this giant cicada biting into the hull of the ship. Do your damn job and kill that thing! You see Menfa back to the side. She is sitting down and she is trying to sing to this creature. I'm going to snarl. Look over at the old woman. Look back at the thing, the Imago. Now, do I know that she's has any like? What's her intent? Ah, oh, jeepers! Is she trying to get it to stop eating the boat, or is she encouraging it? I have no idea. You can ask her. They, their what whole job is to satiate them so that they don't eat people yeah. that are still alive. What are you doing? I am trying to calm it, but it is hard. It is searching for something. There must be something on board. And you hear weakly, Sipa says, It's my sister. She's in this escape pod. It's looking for her. <sighs> and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Anyone? I mean, that was, that, was dun, that was the dramatic end. You can't ruin a dramatic end like that. Dun, dun, dun. Ow. Ow. Don't do that. Doug. Don't take your head. We're not finished. You just Don't said Doug. we'll see you next week. Yeah, but it doesn't finish. We've got to say <laughs> goodbye to people. Bye. Anyway, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, what? That is the end of part one of Nobody Bake the Bugbear Plays, Cloud Empress, The Last Voyage of the Bean Barge. Doug. This is fun. Bye. How do you feel? Uh, alive. You feel alive for your 70-year-old man, Lord Lupus Clay. You feel very alive. How about you, John? I've no idea what we're going to do. You I... know the copter can't escape with all these people. Yes. I also know that shooting the Imago is a bad idea because they're quite tough and it'll just get more pissed off. Yes, you might consider scaring it off with a flare yeah. gun, perhaps. Yeah. You know going, that works. going by Nausicaa rules. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is what clearly this is based on. When they're enraged. Yeah, when they're enraged. The Orms! I feel their terrible rage! Um, and Lonely Cloud, what is your plan? Get everyone off the ship. How? To use magic. You've got a spell that gets everyone off the ship? Um, I don't know how many people fit through the door, but we'll find out. We'll find out for sure. I just imagine it like the teleport spell. Yeah. But more for you, like a single chalk spell for you, is to teleport, open a door and teleport somewhere you've been before within yeah, a, that's a day's like, travel. That's the exact, it's the same as a teleport spell where you can drag people through. But I'm saying... You have like, except in that one, it specifies a time limit. It says that the doors only open for like one minute. Mm. One round teleport. Is it one round or one? I it's can't remember. In, in we'll see you all next week. <laughs> we'll yeah. see you all next week. Thank you very much. We will look at the spells. That was part one of Nobody Wake the Bugbear's playthrough of The Last Voyage of the Bean Barge, a system-neutral adventure for the Cloud Empress RPG setting. Cloud Empress in the Land of 10,000 Cicadas is being developed by Worlds by Watt and will enter crowdfunding via Kickstarter in January 2023. You can find Watt's other works on their Itch store and receive regular project updates and game content by following their newsletter. The links are all in the description the music in this episode has been made by our very own John for well, that title track. Some of it has, yeah. Some yes. of the music is mine. As well as other tracks by Alex Nakarada from SerpentSoundStudios.com. Other sound effects have been taken from freesound.org using the Creative Commons license. Character and other artwork have been used with permission. And, John, you have drawn us beautiful artwork. Yes. The, the artwork of the characters. 
Yes, thank you. Yes, I have. Our story will conclude in part two. Thank you very much for listening or watching. Please consider following us on our socials at NWTB Podcast or on Twitter at NWT Bugbear. This content would not be possible without the support of our generous patrons. If you are enjoying our content, you can join us on patreon.com slash NWTB podcast and get access to early release of our Mothership podcasts, any custom maps, and our heartfelt appreciation. I have been Andrew the Warden. John has been... I've been Boone of Tectite. Doug, you have been... Happy to be here. You look down at your sheet. Your name is Lord Lupus Clay. And finally, Josh, you have been... I have been the Lonely Cloud. And Nimby. And we will see you in part two. Got my last name for a second there.